Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, whatever time it took from your, uh, your, your day to watch this quick training video uh, from us here at uh, FERA Diagnostics and Biologicals. Uh, you know, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself and, and just, you know, to thank you for uh, taking the time to, to listen to us and, and thank you for um, promoting our products out there. And I, we, we truly believe that our uh, diagnostic line of products is, uh, is innovative, it's different, is uh, one of a kind and uh, can help both veterinarians and uh, dairy farmers out there make a, um, a safer product and reduce antimicrobial use while uh, promoting animal welfare, increasing the health of the animals. Um, and, you know, it's a win-win situation. So first of all, my name is Rodrigo Bicalho. I, you know, I'm, uh, I've been involved in the cattle industry my whole life. I grew up on a farm in Brazil, uh, in the center of Brazil, in Goiás. And uh, we had a ranch, but also milked some cows and, and had a small feedlot. I've always been, you know, involved with agriculture. Went to vet school in Brazil and finished vet school there. And then I moved to the U.S. Uh, after marrying my wife. And um, we uh, managed a dairy farm for a little bit. And uh, after that, I joined Cornell University as a resident in the ambulatory clinic. Finished my residency and started a PhD, finished a PhD in epidemiology and joined the faculty at Cornell and the Veterinary College in the Department of uh, uh, Population Medicine uh, and where I worked for 13 years as a professor, a researcher, uh, and also uh, practice veterinary medicine a couple of days a week uh, uh, with focus on dairy cattle. So that's, you know, about uh, eight years ago, we uh, created our first product, our best-selling product, Acumast, and I founded the company. Uh, it was an LLC back in the day. Uh, Farah Animal Health was the name of the company. We restructured the company about four years ago and uh, created a corporation, a C corporation, uh, that is the State of Delaware C Corporation, and the name of the company now is Fera Diagnostics and Biologicals. And last year, I made a decision to, um, to resign my position at Cornell and join my company full-time. And I've been uh, working full-time as the CEO of FARA uh, ever since. We have four products that um, uh, you guys will be uh, selling in partnership with our company. And I wanna show you each one of them. And then I'm gonna uh, do a small presentation uh, to show you uh, how our products are used, what's the impact, what is the return over investment uh, for dairy farmers, and how veterinarians can partner uh, with us and with dairy farmers to uh, create a win-win relationship for everybody. First of all, <clears throat> this is Acumet, uh, a package, a Mylar package like this, uh, has four kits or four plates. This is one plate, and I'm going to show you how to plate it and how to interpret it. But uh, all of our products are produced in, um, in a manufacturer uh, facility in Maine, and they are produced in sterile rooms, right? So these are culture media. And as you can see, culture media, or you can imagine, culture media is extremely uh, easy to spoil. And because it is basically a medium, it has more than 95% water and all the nutrients to stimulate bacterial growth. And one of the big differences of our products compared to others is that this package here can be kept at room temperature and has a shelf life of 12 months. So even though we recommend that once it gets to the veterinary clinic, once it gets to the farm, this package should go into the refrigerator. It is warehoused both at our manufacturing facility and then transported all the way across the country from Maine to Texas at room temperature in, in, in pellets. And it's warehoused here in Texas uh, at room temperature. And from Texas, we ship all, all over North America, but also all over the world. We have distribution in China, in Europe, in Brazil, in Argentina, in, in, in Canada, in Europe, 
uh, and sell product to individual clients, you know, for as far as Russia um, in, uh, you know, Vietnam and Taiwan and whatnot, and Australia. And we don't have a problem with spoilage. So one of the big innovations uh, besides the test itself is that this is the only culture media that you can acquire that has these characteristics. And that's because it is manufactured in a sterile room. And when employees enter that sterile room, they have to put, you know, full sterile clothes and, and gown and, uh, and protective gear. The, there's positive um, pressure in the room with HEPA filtration. So the room is, the air is sterile. The media is prepared, sterilized, and poured robotically. And the other thing that is a differential is the packaging. So in the package, we controlled the humidity. You can see it, you know, it's 90%, 95%, 98% water, 97% water. So if, uh, if we didn't have the technology to stabilize the media uh, as it gets transported at different temperatures and, and stays in the environment, the whole thing liquefies and becomes a mess. So when you open one of our, uh, this is a, our Accu staff, which I'm going to show you. Uh, it's normal to see some moisture around, but you see the media is quite stable and, and normal. So you can open one of these packages. I have one that is already open here, and the package can be open. You rip it open here and open the bag, and you can remove one of the tests. You can see that there is a little bit of, uh, this has been in the refrigerator, so there's a, a little bit of condensation, but that's normal. And you remove it and you perform the test, put it in the incubator, read the test between 16 hours and 20 hours after incubation, and you can reseal the bag. Once this bag is open, it should go in the refrigerator like this. And these plates that are remaining here, the kits are remaining here, are good. Uh, for weeks, you know, we have plates here in our facility because we use them uh, not only for, for QC, but also for our own uh, research purposes here uh, and clinical needs. And we have packages that have been open for months and they're uh, all good. All right, different products. Acumast is our complete diagnostic kit. There's three different media. One is for gram-negative bacteria. That's the lower left media. The white media is our landmark. So the lower left, when I'm looking at it, is this one, the media number, this one, and it's gonna be gram negative. This is our streptococcus section. And this right here is our staphylococcus section. So between the three media, we're gonna have the ability to diagnose uh, all relevant pathogens and differentiate up to 12 different pathogens that causes mastitis. This is our Octomass product. We created a second version of Acumas that we call Acumas Plus. This one has a fourth media on it. Um, and it's important that uh, this media, I'm gonna show it to you. Open the package. This package has been room temperature and I can remove a plate. Now we have this yellow media here underneath the white media. That yellow media is for the differentiation of a very important bacteria called Streptococcus agalactia. Strep agalactia was the uh, most important pathogen in the U.S. Uh, a few decades ago. Uh, good milking routine and good prevention has pretty much eliminated strep ag. It is making a comeback in some regions of the country. Uh, and, it, and it's a major problem in Latin America and China and parts of Europe and Russia. Uh, so that ability to separate strap bag is very important. And you may find some clients that need this product. So we're going to talk a little bit about it, but that's our Acumas Plus. Another product, AccuTreat. We created AccuTreat so that farmers can do uh, one of two things. One is, you know, there are farms that are not very concerned about knowing exactly what all the different pathogens are. They're only interested in saying, all right, tell me uh, what are the infections that need to be treated with antimicrobials? And those, the short answer to that is gram-positive bacterial infections should be treated with antimicrobials. 
So this product will grow all of the gram positive bacteria that causes mastitis. So may have a farm that, or a veterinary practice says, all right, give me a quick way and a cheap way to identify only the um, gram positive, that's how you treat. So if I open uh, this pack, I'm gonna have a quad plate, but all the four media in this quad plate are exactly the same. So in other words, you can use one plate for four different samples, uh, which makes it very cheap, right? So the retail value of one of these is, um, it's uh, $7. And you can, you know, use one plate for uh, four different samples. So uh, you can do the math. It's going to be very cheap uh, to perform a test. If anything grows in, in, in here, it means that you should treat it. So the other use for AccuTreat is selective dry cow therapy. Selective dry cow therapy is when instead of giving any microbials to all the cows and even for cows that have no bacterial infection, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect a composite sample, which means I'm gonna take a milk tube, clean and sterilize the teats, and then I'm gonna collect a few streams of milk into this tube from each quarter of the cow. And I'm gonna culture this here, so I can do four cows. Now I will only treat with any of my dry cow therapy, antibiotics, if I have bacterial infection in that cow. If the cow is clean, I'm only gonna use what we call a uh, internal teeth sealant, okay? So selective dry cow therapy and um, identification, quick identification of gram-positive bacteria, that's how you treat. The last product that you guys are gonna uh, represent as well is also a quad plate. And it's our AccuStep. AccuStep is again, you can do four samples. And we use these for screening entire herds, for screening um, fresh cows, for screening infected cows, uh, looking for Staph aureus. So Staph aureus, here in this media, if, it, if you have any kind of growth, it's gonna be Staphylococcus, the general, uh, the general Staphylococcus. If it's pink, pink bacteria, pink growth, it's gonna be Staph aureus. So in many instances, farmers are fighting uh, the spread of Staph aureus and they need to test the entire herd. Uh, this makes it very affordable, $1.75 uh, per cow, uh, because you can do four cows in one plate. Same thing with that to treat uh, for identification of step for it. Okay, so these are our four cows, and let's talk a little bit about, uh, about mastitis before we go back about our products and our technologies, okay? So I'm gonna share a screen with you uh, here. And we're going to review some of the mastitis problems. All right, so I need to talk about mastitis so that you can understand how to transmit the return over investment, the ROI of adopting our, the use of our products together with the management that we recommend, <clears throat> both for veterinarians partnering with dairy farmers, but also to dairy farmers directly. All right, so when we need to understand the distribution or the epidemiology of mastitis. And this is, this is very true anywhere in the world, actually. It doesn't change. So people, when we start selling products in a new country, um, let's say we go to Japan and you know, some veterinarians say, well, but the bacteria here in, in Japan or China or Brazil or Uruguay are different than the bacteria in America. The truth is not really. So if you're milking hosting cows or hosting crosses or jerseys, in a confined environment, if it's a, you know, free stalls or dry lots or whatnot, whatever, you're, in, you're gonna end up having the same bacteria epidemiology of mastitis. So if I take 100 cows that have mastitis, that I identify, that have you know, clinical mastitis, I can actually see clots in the milk or inflammation in the mammary gland or uh, the animal is sick, mastitis, clinical mastitis. I take those uh, milk sample from those 100 cows. Very interestingly, it doesn't matter where you are in the country or in the world, uh, there will be about 30 to 45 to 50% of those samples that no longer have a bacterial infection. How interesting. So if I plate that in the Acumas plate, I'm gonna put milk in this section, in this section, in this section, and I incubate it, 
and wait 16 to 20 hours. And then after that, I look at it, it's going to be empty, clean, just like this one. How interesting. So what happened there? Well, those cows are cows that have experienced an infection, a mild infection. The immune system has been activated. Uh, the clash between the immune system and the bacterial infection have caused what we call a, uh, a, a disease. You know, it's basically the, clin the, the, the clinical signs that we observe. And, but the immune system won the battle, you know, and the bacteria, it was completely absent from the time you collected, identified you collected the milk sample. So very important. These cows no longer have an infection. They just have inflammation. And what you're seeing is an inflamed mammary gland. And inflammation takes more time to resolve the infection, usually. Now, the most important message for these 30 to 50% of the cases is that they don't need to be treated with antimicrobials. So right off the bat, we are saving um, the treatment of 30 to 50% of these mastitis cases because the cows have already won that uh, battle and antibiotics are no longer required. So fantastic. Now, what about the other cases, the 60 other cases, 60 to 70 other cases out there that will have something growing on them? Well, then we have basically three groups of bacteria. Number one, we have gram-negative, gram-negative infections. These are bacteria that have a layer in their bacterial wall called a lipopolysaccharide or LPS. They are typically, uh, in, they're all environmental, they're not contagious, they're present in feces, and they're bacteria uh, such as E. coli, which you guys know well, and Klebsiella, which you should know well as well. They're all their gram-negative bacteria, but E. coli and Klebsiella are the majority of these cases. Typically, of the gram-negative bacteria, which might be 30% of the cases, 25 to 40% you know, of all cases of mastitis, Half of those cases are going to be E. coli. The other half are going to be Klebsiella. It may vary from farm to farm, but it's similar to that. Now, the E. coli infected cows, even though E. coli causes severe mastitis, number one, not all cases of E. coli mastitis are severe. And the self-cure rate of uh, mild cases of E. coli is extremely high. So the immune system is very good at eliminating E. coli from the memory gland. And 95% of the cows experience self-cure within 15 days after the diagnosis of the disease with antimicrobial treatment or without antimicrobial treatment. In other words, intramammary use of antibiotics for the treatment of E. coli is not going to change the outcome, the clinical outcome of the disease. In other words, uh, we do not recommend the use of antimicrobials to treat E. coli, a mild cases of E. coli mastitis, because the self-cure rate is uh, with antimicrobials or without antimicrobials is exactly the same. So E. coli should not be treated. Klebsiella's, on the other hand, cause a more chronic case of uh, gram-negative mastitis. And there are some reports, some scientific reports, that suggests that treating these cases, the Klebsiella cases with antimicrobials can improve bacteriological cure rate by you know, two or three folds. So we do recommend, if you find a case of Klebsiella mastitis, you should put those cows in antimicrobials. Now, we already eliminated treatment for all of our culture negative. We already eliminated treatment for all of our E. coli cases. We're going to treat the Klebsiella cases. Now let's move on to our third group of bacteria, the gram-positive bacteria. So we have gram-positive bacteria that are uh, environmental, and we have gram-positive bacteria that are uh, contagious. Let's talk about the environmental ones first. Environmental uh, gram-positive bacteria are dominated by streptococcus. These streptococcus are, uh, if you're uh, streptococcus agalactic free, you're going to be uh, seeing a lot of uh, uh, Streptococcus uberus and Streptococcus dysgalactic. They're both commonly found in the bedding and they're also found in the manure of cows. So they are a, everywhere in the environment. They're opportunistic and they cause infections. There are also uh, Staphylococci, 
uh, that are non-contagious. Uh, a few examples of the most common is Staphylococcus primogenes and Staphylococcus hemolyticus. These are what we call coagulase negative Staphylococcus or non-aureus Staphylococcus. And they are treatable. Uh, and if, the, if you find them in clinical cases of mastitis, you should, uh, all of these actually, if you don't treat with any microbials, the cows don't recover uh, from the infection uh, well. So the use of antibiotics, intramammary antibiotics is highly recommended for all of these environmental gram-positive bacteria. And the very last category of gram positives is the contagious gram positives. Staph aureus, contagious, and does not respond well to antimicrobial therapy. Uh, so the majority of uh, veterinarians would recommend that if you identify Staph aureus, you should call the animals that are positive. Hence the very important um, uh, uh, it, it is extremely important that the test has very high accuracy, both specificity and sensitivity. And our tests it, are nearly 100% accurate for the detection of Staph aureus. So very important, both AccuStaph and the AccuMass products, AccuMass and AccuMass Plus, detect Staph aureus with nearly 100% accuracy. And that's a, a phenomenal advantage of our products. The last one, is Streptococcus agalactia, like I mentioned, it has been mainly uh, controlled or, or uh, by, by uh, the majority of the cases. And um, but if you have a problem with uh, Streptococcus agalactia, uh, you better be very aggressive in testing, identifying, and treating the infected animals, and calling the chronic ones that are uh, uh, refractory to to the diagnosis. All right, so. Our goal then is uh, instead of treating all cases of mastitis, we're going to identify mastitis, collect a milk sample, incubate the sample, and then make treatment decisions. If the cow is culture negative or a cow that have already experienced self-cure, we're not gonna treat her, we're just gonna observe. Once the milk returns to normal, the cow returns to her regular pan and milk returns to the tank. If it's a gram negative bacteria, we're gonna observe, oh, it's an E. coli case, we're not going to treat uh, E. coli cases. We're just going to um, uh, wait. And when the cow normalizes her milk, she goes back to the pen. If it's Klebsiella, we're going to treat her. All the environmental gram positives should be treated, and the veterinarian should recommend antimicrobials for that. And the contagious, uh, the Staph aureus should be identified, segregated, or called. And uh, Strap Ag should be treated, and the chronic ones should be. Uh, call. All right, let's talk about the technology for our products then, and why does our product allow um, for the uh, separation, differentiation of all of these different bacteria. I like to say that we have three layers of technology in all of in our diagnostic products. In AcuMass, let's start with AcuMass. The first one is selective media. What does that mean? Well, selective media is a media that only allows certain types of bacteria to grow. Others are inhibited. So we, in the gram-negative section, this section right here, only gram-negative bacteria will grow. So if you have a growth in this section here, usually there's no growth on this one on, or in this one and growth here. And uh, if it grows here, it's going to be a gram-negative bacteria. And uh, if it grows in the white section, it's going to be either streptococcus, lactococcus, or enterococcus. If it grows on the staph media, it's either going to be uh, a certain kind of staph. So how do we accomplish that? Well, we add you know, a combination of chemicals and antibiotics that inhibit the groups of bacteria that are not desired to grow in the section. And we add additives and uh, uh, stimulants, let's put it this way, that promotes the fast growth of the bacteria that we want it to grow. That's why, you know, if you use blood agar, it, it takes uh, 24 hours to 48 hours uh, for growth to be detected. In our meeting, 16 hours um, uh, to 20 hours, that's uh, when it's optimal to interpret the results. So it's fast. Again, if we have growth uh, here, um, in this section, gram-negative, here is gonna be either streptococcus, enterococcus, lactococcus, 
And in the staph section, it's going to be staphylococcus uh, coagulase negative or coagulase positive staphylococcus. The second layer of technology is the color coding, color based classification of bacteria, the patented uh, color based classification of the bacteria. And this is very important. It's highly technological, actually. So you can see here this color blue. These are actually colonies of bacteria that are growing and uh, they are turning blue. This is the strep hubris bacteria in the strep section. How does the coloring happen? Well, in the media, in each one of the media, there is a uh, blend of chromophores. These chromophores are color farming crystals that when they're bound to the enzymatic substrate and mixed into the media, they form no color. When the bacteria grows in the media, uh, each bacteria, each different bacterial species have unique enzymes that are produced and excreted uh, into the media environment. Those enzymes then will go to this uh, chromophore and uh, cleave the connection between the substrate and the color farming chromophore. The chromophore, when released, crystallizes around the bacteria and forming color. I'll give you a perfect example here. We have a coagulase um, chromophore uh, or enzymatic substrate that is bound to a pink color chromophore. Staphylococcus aureus is a coagulase producing bacteria. So when Staph aureus is growing in the staph media, it will produce coagulase. Coagulase will go to the enzymatic substrate, cleave the connection and release the pink uh, forming crystal. And the crystals, the chromophores, are going to accumulate around the colony of uh, Staph aureus, forming the intense pink coloration. And that's why we know, by knowing, first of all, where did it grow? In the Staph section. What color was the bacteria? Pink, Staph aureus, 100% guaranteed Staph aureus. And if it uh, grew in the staph section and it was green or blue, that would be a staph hemolyticus. If it was white, it would be uh, staphylococcus chromogenes, on and on and on. So the uh, color-based classification is the second layer of the technology. The third layer of the technology is manufacturing and packaging. You know, if when we started doing uh, this, we didn't have the package, we had the we had the media, we had the technology, we had the selective media, the chromogenic media, but we didn't have the packaging. Now, with our manufacturing packaging technology, we can ship our products at room temperature all over the world. We can make, we can warehouse our products in, uh, in our dis distribution chain at room temperature. We can ship product at room temperature. We are the only ones in the world that can do this with, um, with our, uh, with our culture media. So. That's a huge advantage uh, for us. So that's the third layer of technology. Let's look at some pictures here. All right, this is our guide in veterinarians can take this and make their recommendations right connected to the pictures. Like, you know, the veterinarians could say, all right, I, you know, based on the work that Pamela Rugg has done, when she was uh, uh, researching the treatment of E. coli Klebsiella, she has suggested um, in her uh, research that treating Klebsiella is beneficial, whereas treating E. coli is not beneficial. Our group, when I was at Cornell, we also suggested the same. So vets can say, all right, we're going to create a protocol for treatment of Klebsiella, which is blue in the gram-negative section. We're not going to treat E. coli. Uh, Pseudomonas is going to be uh, uh, yellow. And we have all their gram-negative. They're rare that we don't have here. but uh, but, but they, they may happen as well. So you can create a protocol attached to the diagnosis. Very simple. In the strep section, if it's dark blue, it's going to be strep uberis. The research indicates strep uberis is a hard to treat uh, streptococcus. So you may want to use a better drug with a longer uh, treatment protocol. The light blue is going to be your, your other types of streps and strep dysgalactic dominates here. So you may create a, a protocol uh, specifically for Streptococcus dysgalactia. Enterococcus and Lactococcus will also occur. So you can create protocols specific for those as well. Um, in the staph section, you're gonna have your coagulase negative. There's gonna be white or blue or green. And then you're gonna have your pink bacteria right here. 
uh, that's your staph aureus and the vat can create the protocol to deal with these different bacteria in a, uh, in a unique way. Instead of treating all mastitis equally, you're just going to go boom, 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 uh, go after the opportunities as, uh, as they go. Advantages, we have, uh, um, there's been a study that performed, several studies actually have been performed, and this one was uh, a study that was done by, at the University of Illinois by Dr. Lima, and he compared us against uh, three competitors out there, the Minnesota Triplate, uh, SSNG and SSGNC uh, systems, and our accuracy was incredibly superior. Um, you know, most accurate only test to correctly identify staph aureus. This is from the study uh, with a 99% accuracy of staph aureus um, detection, our product. Um, so the interesting thing here is our product promised to separate 11 to 12 different microbes. These other products all promise only to separate gram positive, gram negative, and no growth. And even with the 12 different options of diagnosis, we were uh, uh, way more sensitive and way more specific, way more accurate than the other products. We we're basically, uh, you know, killing it. Crushing the competition. So conclusion, our findings suggest the Acumas was the most accurate on-farm culture system for identification of mastitis associated pathogens of the four systems included in the analysis. Fantastic. This is another study uh, looking at positive predicted value, you know, 97% for E. coli, 100% for Enterococcus, 100% for other gram negatives, and 95% for all the Streptococcus. So the conclusion, Acumas is a unique approach from, from the education of pathogens. Ability to create specific protocols the veterinarians can create. Uh, and if the veterinarians are doing the cultures themselves for the farmers, they can, you know, uh, communicate uh, treatments for individual cows. This is extremely powerful and strengthen the relationship of the veterinarian and the client uh, tremendously. So this is a, a video that I'd like to play for you guys. Um, let's see if I can do this. Uh, there you go. Did you know that 3 out of 10 cows will be diagnosed with mastitis annually? One of the diseases that most affect the animal's health and well-being. Furthermore, each case of mastitis has an economic loss. Among the main costs are antibiotics, labor, milk disposal, and losses in productivity and fertility. And when the animal is subjected to antibiotic treatment, all milk must be discarded for eight days. But the truth is that not all animals affected with mastitis need antibiotics. Four out of ten animals already have bacteriological self-cure, negative culture, when the disease is identified. Among the other 60% of cases of mastitis, some require antibiotics and others do not. And how do you know which animal needs treatment? Simple. We at Thera created Acumast Plus. It will help you make the best decisions, improving the animal's health and welfare. Also of great importance is the identification of animals infected with contagious pathogens. And the plus of our diagnostic kit is the identification of contagious pathogens such as Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus agalacti. By using Acumas Plus, you will greatly reduce the cost of mastitis on your farm. The identification of contagious pathogens allows actions to be taken for their control. And always remember, consult your veterinarian regarding treatment recommendations for your herd. With Acumast Plus, you will have happier and healthier animals, more milk production, and financial return.
Okay, so we actually calculated for uh, all the sales that we had uh, for 2021 and farms that implement the use of our products together with the um, management that we recommend that we have kept 32,000 tons, 32,000 tons of milk from being discarded. And, um, and entered the, the market and all of that uh, money returned to the pockets of dairy farmers. So it's pretty uh, impressive the impact that we, uh, that we have and, and we're just starting. You know, our sales uh, grow uh, yearly by about 60% and we can impact so much more. Uh, we can do so much more. And that's why you know, the mission of our company is a noble one and we want, really want to uh, to help both uh, empower veterinarians to strengthen their relationship with, uh, with farmers um, and, and, and basically ultimately increasing the sustainability of the entire system. So, you know, in the end of the day, what we accomplish is this. Uh, we can reduce antibiotic use by up to 70% of our products. That means less labor, means less milk discarded, less unintended damage to cows. What do I mean by unintended damage? Well, for a cow that will not benefit from any microbials, putting that cow into a protocol that requires uh, the animal to be treated daily for up to eight days, uh, and the treatment is, is, is very invasive. We're basically you know, putting a, uh, an infusion through the teeth canal into the mammary gland uh, and typically done by uh, people that are trained and they're skillful, but they are in a hurry. You know, they're doing, you know, a lot. And um, there's always a chance, even if you had all the time in the world, there is a chance that you're going to make a mistake, that you're going to introduce an infection, that you're going to damage the mucosa of the, of the teeth and the teeth canal and so on. So unintended damage when treatments uh, are proven to have no effect. If you treat a cow that doesn't need to be treated, and it's the only thing you can accomplish is damaging those cows. Fewer cows in the hospital pan and more milk in the tank, that's huge. Lower cost uh, with antimicrobials, equal or better cure rates. That's the, the bottom line. You know, everywhere in North America that we go, the return over investment is one of the highest that I have ever uh, observed of any product, of any management strategy. For every dollar that you put into the diagnostics, you recoup at least $10 uh, in, uh, in savings, in um, labor savings, antimicrobial uh, drug savings, and particularly milk discard, which is gigantic. So it's highly profitable. Mastitis is by far the number one reason to use antibiotics in the dairy industry. Pathogen-based therapy will reduce antimicrobial use, shift, potentially shift from broad spectrum to narrow spectrum as you target specific pathogens uh, differently. Shift away from the second generation cephalosporin, highest priority when considered critically important antimicrobial for human medicine when it comes to uh, antimicrobial use in dairy cows. Farmers want to do the right thing. Nowadays, farmers are very conscious um, about uh, their impact and the impact of their operations on uh, the world, actually, and they they prefer to do what's right. That's basically it. This is the AccuTreat. We already talked about it, and it's a quad plate. We'll grow all the gram positive. It's a very colorful, very easy to interpret uh, uh, system. It's very useful for uh, selective dry cow therapy. Uh, and I wish we had more people doing selective dry cow therapy in this country. Uh, look how easy it is to identify the animals that are infected versus the animals that are not infected. And this is our Acu staff for uh, you know screening uh, both fresh cows or, or clinical and subclinical cows for staph aureus. Uh, very affordable, very accurate, very easy to use, uh, fantastic product. That's it. Well, the last thing I want to do is you know all you need is milk collection vials individually packed swabs. This one we sell and it has two swabs per package. They're sterile. And of course, our product. The last thing is an incubator. 
incubators are cheap. You know, it doesn't, re it, it, we can sell incubators. I think it's 200 bucks uh, an incubator. They last forever. They're very accurate in keeping temperature. Uh, it's not an impediment. Mo most veterinary practices have incubators um, and farmers uh, will not think twice before making a $200 investment if they have to. Once you collect your sample, you're going to identify, uh, of course, the, the number of the cow in the quarter that he, uh, that he got. Let's say, you know, this is cow number 882, and this was the right front quarter, 882, right front quarter. And I'm going to do the same thing with a plate. I'm going to write, usually I like to write in the back of the plate, not on the cap, because you can lose the cap or exchange the cap. So and uh, I'd like to write on the white media here on the back. So this is gonna be eight, eight, two, right front quarter. That's what it is. Do I need to, you know, wear a mask, a respirator, you know, the gloves? No, you just have to clean and to be clean. And all you need to do is um, not talk when you're uh, plating. That's the biggest thing. Because saliva, you know, is the biggest uh, commonest uh, reason for contamination. Get this out. I'm going to talk because I, I need to talk. We're going to dip this into our milk sample. And starting here, you know, we're going to cover the entire surface of the media. Again, the entire surface of that media. I'm going to go back into my milk sample. Oops. Cover the entire section of the second media. I'm going to go back, collect some more sample, and cover the entire section of the last media. Yes, that's all you have to do. We're done. This plate now goes upside down like this into the incubator. And it's, you know, 16 hours later, uh, 16 to 20 hours later, you're going to interpret the results based on location and, and, and color of growth, you know what it is. And you can make your treatment recommendations based on that. Well, that's all I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, we're gonna have a, a simple quiz for you to, um, uh, to get your credits for for listening to this. Thank you very much. We're here to help. Um, we are a company of scientists and, and veterinarians. Uh, we're passionate about uh, microbiology. We're passionate about animal health. We're passionate about uh, agriculture. We're here to help. And anybody can call me directly. My cell phone is actually printed on our product. And when we sell an incubator, I put a sticker on it with my cell phone and say, you know, Contact me if you have any questions. Send me pictures of results if you're uh, in doubt, if you're learning. Um, my cell phone, again, is 607-342-8135. You guys can give me a call uh, if you have any questions or uh, if you have any comments. And I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you so much.